Thank you, Speaker. I rise to also make a contribution to this take note debate on the report on the protocol for homeless people in public places as a member of the Community Services Committee. And while the primary purpose of this inquiry was to look specifically at this protocol, given the intersection between this protocol and the broader issues of homelessness and the crisis that this state is currently facing, as well as the timing of this inquiry coinciding with the global pandemic that saw a significant shift in how the government responded to working with organisations and services the community needs when it comes to the issue of people who are homeless and sleeping rough. The insights offered by those who made submissions to this inquiry, the experiences and advice shared by those who appeared as witnesses, and the content of the report itself provides for a very timely snapshot of the issue of homelessness and some of the ways that homelessness can be prevented and ended. The recommendations in the report, which I'm pleased to say I was able to make a significant contribution to amending and adding to during the deliberative meeting, and I wish to acknowledge the fact that there was a recognition of the contribution that I was able to make as a member of this place that represents areas with higher number of homeless people in it as opposed to us playing party political games over who makes those amendments I was very grateful I was very grateful for that we could see that some of those were incorporated into the report some of these crucial recommendations included ensuring that there is a clear review process, and I note the member for Albury just talked about the importance of that review, but also including a plan for implementation and accountability mechanisms for the protocol. Looking to expand the specific communities that are considered in relation to the protocol to include young people, LGBTIQ plus people, and also no, non-citizens. It was very clear throughout this uh, inquiry that the issues faced by dealing with housing and homelessness in relation relation to non-citizens is something that needs more focus and more work and something that I believe needs more attention by government, particularly beyond this pandemic. I also note the importance of making sure that young people, particularly um, ensuring that there are child protection provisions, is a crucial element of what this committee uh, uh, discovered when in, in, in conducting this inquiry. Broadening and encouraging other agencies and councils to become signatories and establishing more training and support for them, making sure the importance of a housing first approach is referred to in the protocol, considering the benefits of public space liaison officers and funding of those positions by government if there was ever a desire to create jobs uh, in New South Wales at the moment, it seems that that is high on the agenda and being able to create funding for local councils to be able to establish public space liaison officers in highly um, uh, in areas where there is a high number of rough sleepers would be a wonderful contribution to the community and also a way to create local jobs. And I also wanted to acknowledge the fact that there is a need for the protocol to be accessible, both in terms of having person-centred language, being tra trauma-informed, and being able to ensure that those who are unable to speak or read English are able to engage with the services and supports. And I wish to note that um, when we joined the assertive outreach team, and all credit to the individuals that are doing that, that there was someone that we came across who didn't speak English and a card was handed to them with just English on it um, for them to be able to engage with services which obviously is of absolutely no use and I wish to acknowledge that uh, Paul Vivas, the Deputy Secretary of the New South Wales Department of Communities and Justice immediately took that on board, recognised that as a problematic approach. Speaker, if I might just seek a brief extension so I don't have to speed read. No objection. Thank you, Minister. Um, Sorry, I'll just check where the clerk is. By leave, um, I can seek leave to yes. have uh, a brief yes. extension. So is no leave one granted? Speed read. Amazing. Leave, leave Thank is you. granted until two thousand uh, one two. <laughs> <laughs> one fifteen. Uh, 2022. I'll keep to going. Um, I've got a short period, of about one minute. I appreciate that. And also to ensure that there is an annual review of the protocol, as the member for Aubrey said. Now, we know that homelessness is not inevitable. We know that no one should be denied a safe, secure, habitable place to live. And it's clear that the Together Home model is one that recognises the need for government support to house people and put housing first, as well as offer wraparound services. And I hope that this is continued to be funded and expanded so that we can address homelessness and put an end to homelessness in this state because it is not incurable. It is not an incurable problem. We have those solutions. Finally, I would wish to thank all of the homelessness experts and advocates and community service members who made contributions to this committee, including Homelessness New South Wales, all the local councils and all of the services and community organisations that appeared before us. 
I would finally like to urge the minister and the government to do all they can to take on board the recommendations of this report, to hear the stories of those with lived experiences, homelessness, the experts and the people that have the solutions so we can act to end homelessness together in New South Wales. I thank the committee staff for their contribution and attention to detail when it comes to supporting the work of the inquiry and acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues on the committee and thank them for working in a collaborative way.